Hi there, today I thought I'd share with you this uh, fun card design. It's quite simple to make and it looks quite elegant and uh, with that little touch of bling. So I thought that I would share this with you today and I'm also going to give you a few hints and tips on how you can uh, make it with what you have at your disposal in your stash because I, I'm quite aware that you're, you might not have this bright pink ribbon and bright pink card stock. So for instance, let's keep the black and white theme, but change the colour from pink. You could perhaps have a bright yellow ribbon and bright yellow cardstock. You could substitute a baby pink rather than a bright pink or a baby blue, for instance. So you can change up that accent colour. But you could also change up the black and white. You might not have black and white, but you might have navy blue and white. You, you definitely want a dark colour with a light colour um, and then an accent colour. So you could have navy blue and white with a red ribbon. You could have something a little bit more subtle and go with brown and cream and perhaps a baby blue ribbon. So the choices are yours and I'll point out a few more things that you can uh, do to um, enable you to make this card using the stash that you've got at your disposal. So starting out with my first colour which is black and all my stamping will be black. So my card base measures 11.5 inches by 8 inches and then I've scored it and I'm folding it in half at 5 and 3 quarters. So your card base could be navy blue, it could be brown, uh, definitely you want to keep it as a dark colour. So next we need a piece of um, contrast cardstock, our coordinating colour. And that piece is going to measure seven and three quarter inches by five and five eighths of an inch. So I've got a piece of ribbon that matches my card stock. I've also picked out this picked raspberry distress ink because I think um, that's the nearest colour ink colour to my card that I have. And I've also got a black archival ink. So if you were using navy blue card, you would pick a navy blue archival ink and the reason we're using archival is we're going to be using water with our distress ink so we don't want that to run. So starting out with my card base I'm going to fix my uh, pink card stock so that it is flush across the top of the card. So once again the measurements uh, will be over on my blog and I'm going to start out by rounding the bottom corners of my card stock and my card. So you only need to round the bottom corners because the top edge uh, will be attached along the fold edge of the card and you're also going to round the bottom of the card base itself. So I'm doing these one at a time because uh, my card is quite thick and uh, I won't get the two layers together through my punch. And then I'm using double sided tape to attach the pink card stock to the black card base. And then make sure that you line up the top of the card to the fold of the actual card base. Next, divide the bottom of a two inch square at one inch, so it's divided in half, and then make a mark half an inch into the uh, card stock. And then you're gonna draw a line from that point out to each of the two corners. And that will give you the shape of a sort of ribbon effect piece of card that we're going to uh, stamp our greeting on. And then I've also got a two and a quarter inch piece of black card stock, which I'm gonna mount this trimmed piece onto. I'm lining the white piece with the very top of the black square, and then I'm using the white card as a template to cut the black card into shape. Next we're going to stamp the greeting with black archival ink. Uh, you could be using a navy blue archival or a dark brown archival depending on your colour scheme and this could be any greeting stamp. I can't tell you the name of this one because I've had it a long time and there's no name on it. There is a price but not a name and it just says just for you. So next taking a piece of white cardstock that measures five and a half by seven and a half and rounding the bottom corners. I'm going to be stamping all over with a black archival ink and using this background flower stamp. And I've picked a background stamp that has a little bit of um, 
or has area that I can colour because I want to colour it with my accent pink colour. So you need to pick a background stamp that you can add colour to. Uh, this is a Hampton Arts, uh, I believe it's designed by Karen Neuberger. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, something that I've had in my stash for a long time. Excuse me for keep getting my head in and shaking the camera. But uh, this background stamp, because they're quite big, you need to put a little bit of pressure. And my table has a little bit of give in it. So I find it's easier to stand up. And I'm just stamping all over the cardstock with my background stamp. Once you've finished stamping your background, you're going to attach that piece of cardstock to your card front using double sided tape. And again, just lining it up with the folded edge of the card, making sure you've got a nice pink border evenly all the way around three sides of the stamped card. Taking a strip of black card that measures two and a quarter inches by five and a half, and again using double sided tape, you're going to attach that across your card front. You also need to attach your greeting into position at this point, and you're just going to do that with double sided tape and position it up against the black strip. So you want to take approximately an 18 inch length of your ribbon. This is a nice wide ribbon so I get a really good and generous um, bow and I'm just tying it and arranging it and then you're going to check it for size against your card. So I'm just manipulating my bow so that it looks nice, making sure everything's lying uh, nicely and then I'm just checking the size of it on my card and I'm quite happy with that and then it's time to trim the ends of your ribbon so I'm just trimming them in diagonally into a point and that should help stop the ribbon from fraying. I apologise if I sound a bit rough I've got a bit of a cold uh, luckily you don't have to sit with me while I show you how to make this card because I wouldn't want to pass my germs around so I'm dividing my cardstock lengthways at one inch and the cardstock measures five and a half inches by two inches and I'm going to be using this ribbon tool to create the holes that will allow me to weave my ribbon through this white card strip so this is quite a nifty little tool by we are memory keepers and I'm going to clip it it's got two little magnets in it I'm going to clip it with my cardstock in between, sandwiched in between. And the magnets allow you to manipulate the card that's inside so that I can make sure that it's lined up along the pencil line so that it's straight and that I've got even amounts of card uh, side to side and top and bottom of the little yellow ruler. So once you're happy it's lined up you're ready to start piercing the holes in your cardstock. You can get these little ribbon rulers in uh, lots of different styles. This one has a diagonal weave and you can get one that just does a straight weave and there's also one that does almost like kisses of ribbon um, and gives you the holes that will allow you to do that. So it's got a slightly curved blade on this design and you need to make sure that the top and bottom pieces of the ruler are lined up so that your uh, blade pushes through, a bit like using a punch. So I'm just pushing the little uh, blade through the uh, arched um, gap or hole in the ruler. And as you can see, um, once it goes in, it does, just because it's curved, I think, take a little wiggle just to pull it out of the ribbon. Um, slot and you just keep going all the way along your card until you've pierced all the holes. So I can hear you shouting Helen I haven't got this tool what am I going to do? Well I'm going to show you at the end of this video an alternative method to use if you don't have access to this tool 
or something similar because I know that you can get punches that uh, punch the holes ready to allow you to weave ribbons through cardstock so you could use that it is quite a nifty little tool as you can see it did uh, look a little bit more tricky than it actually was it's just um, that it's got a curved blade and you can see it stores neatly away uh, in the ruler it keeps everything together um, and it just allows you to punch the holes um, evenly down the length of your paper strip. So I'm just removing the pencil line that we did at the beginning and I'm ready to begin weaving my ribbon. This little tool does come with a kind of um, needle for your ribbon and uh, I can't actually use that because my ribbon's quite wide. If I'd used perhaps a half inch wide ribbon I could have used it and it would make the job a little bit easier um, but because I'm sort of gathering up my ribbon as I weave it through I can't use the little tool that comes with the um, or the little needle that comes with the kit so I've got a couple here as you can see and all they are, are sort of a bit like acetate pieces that you peel the back off and you can stick it to the end of your ribbon and use it as a needle to pull your ribbon through uh, the holes that you've made so as I said, I'm just going to find this a little bit more tricky. I'm leaving enough ribbon at the end so I can tuck it through a stitch once I've uh, got all of the ribbon threaded. And then I'm just going along the length of the cardstock, weaving the ribbon through. And because, it, as I said, it is wider than perhaps you would normally use, I'm just paying you know, a bit of attention to the fact that I'm not twisting my ribbon. I'm keeping it as flat as I can so that it gathers up nicely on the front of the card strip. So once you get to the end, you're ready to just secure the ends of the ribbon. So working on the back of your ribbon strip, you're just going to tuck the ends under the next stitch. So I'm just using a pencil to poke the ends of the ribbon through and then I'm going to trim away the excess piece of ribbon. Now because my ribbon is quite puffy, I'm using a strong double-sided tape to attach this and make sure it sits flat against the card. So I've got this strong double-sided tape and then as I attach it to my card, I'm just making sure I push it down so that it's nice and flat. So just be careful that you get it even top and bottom because once this tape takes hold, that's it. <laughs> and I'm ready to begin painting. So I'm using this picked raspberry distress ink, which I'm just putting against my craft mat or squishing against my craft mat. And distress ink is water based. So I'm just using a paintbrush and some water and I'm colouring in my background stamp. So now you can see why I've attached everything first because there's really no point in colouring everything that's uh, hidden by the paper strips that you've attached to the front of your card. You might not be um, all that comfortable colouring in with a paintbrush and that's okay because alternatively you could be using coloured pencils to do this or perhaps your pro markers but if you use something like pro markers don't forget to stamp with the correct ink because um, an archival ink wouldn't really be suitable to use with alcohol markers so I think from this you can understand now why I said choose a background stamp that will allow you to add a little bit of colour and it just brings the whole card together I think so um, I'll carry on painting and uh, then I'll show you the finishing touches Although it takes a little while, it is quite therapeutic and relaxing to colour in these tiny details and it looks nice when it's finished. So now we're ready to add that final finishing touch which is our ribbon and our little bit of bling. I'm going to be using a hot glue gun but you could equally use um, a silicone glue if you wanted to or a glue dot and so I'm just arranging my ribbon and making sure I can still see my greeting and then adding a creative expressions dazzler just to add that final touch of sparkle to my card.
So if you don't have a punch or a ribbon tool that I used in this video, I wanted to show you an alternative way of creating a little uh, strip that you can thread the ribbon through. So I'm beginning by dividing my strip of card in half and um, then I'm creating a uh, quarter of an inch channel either side of that centre line. So uh, the Tim Holtz rule is perfect for this because you've got the grid and you can line everything up. Um, as you can see, I've uh, because this is just a scrap of card, I've literally just drawn the line roughly where the middle was and then I've come a quarter of an inch either side um, because I haven't bothered measuring my strip to start with. So I also want to find the centre point of my um, piece of card, so whatever length of card that you'll be working on, you find the centre point and then it's from that point that I'm going to work out the spacing for my little diagonal uh, strips of ribbon. So I'm starting from the centre point and I'm marking a half inch either side and each of my ribbon's um, little slits are going to be half an inch wide. So I'm leaving a quarter of an inch gap in between and then moving along and making another mark at the half inch. So half inch, quarter of an inch all the way to the edge of the strip. So you have to be careful not to go too close to the edge of the strip, otherwise you might pull through the end of the card strip with your ribbon when you're threading it through. So I'm coming back the other way, again marking it every uh, half inch and every quarter of an inch. Next you want to slightly stagger your um, stitch line because we're doing a diagonal stitch and we're working on the bottom line. So I've increased the centre line to the bottom line of my uh, three little channels and this time I'm starting a quarter of an inch from that centre line then every half inch, quarter inch, half inch, quarter of an inch all the way along the strip. So you need to keep your concentration here because uh, it's quite easy to just do two half inches or two quarter of an inches by mistake. So just have a double check once you've put all your markings in place that you have actually done half inch, quarter of an inch, half inch, quarter of an inch um, and that the top and bottom uh, channels that you've created are actually staggered. I'm working on the premise that I'm going to be threading a half inch ribbon hence my uh, little half inch channels that I'm going to create. So taking your metal edge ruler and a craft knife you're going to create a little cut at every half inch gap so you're uh, you're not cutting the quarter of an inch section, you're cutting the half inch section and you're going to do that on the top line and then you're going to repeat it on the bottom line and those little splits should be staggered diagonally. So it was at this point that I realised that I'd made a mistake so I had to backtrack and uh, as you can see here that's why it's quite, it is, I wanted to leave this in because it is quite easy to um, forget where you're at and I did two half inch um, pieces one after the other and I I'd missed out the quarter of an inch so it's just a case of backtracking and working where, where you made your mistake and then I'm cutting every half inch gap. So once you've had a go at doing uh, the ribbon technique this way there's lots of scope for altering the length of your stitches and the spacing of your stitches so you can create different kinds of uh, ribbon Perhaps you could work out how to do a cross stitch or a running stitch because um, the principle is the same. It's all about the spacing and where you put these little splits that you're going to sew through with your ribbon. Just flip my card over because that can be the reverse of the card and I'm just cutting a strip of ribbon that's twice the length of my strip of card. So as you can see it's, a, it's roughly a half inch uh, wide strip of ribbon. And then I'm going to use my strong double sided tape to uh, make a, a kind of needle for my ribbon. So I'm just cutting a small piece and I'm going to attach it to one end of the ribbon and then fold it over so that it's folded in half and then I'm just going to trim it to a slight point. And it, that will just keep the end of my ribbon nice and uh, stiff so that I can easily thread it through the splits that I've made in the card. Because the actual uh, splits themselves are quite closed I just take um, my little pointy tool and just run it along each of the channels 
and it just opens it up enough uh, that it makes it a little bit easier one to see where they are and two to be able to thread that needle through so I'm not pushing too hard I'm just uh, gently running the very tip of the pointy tool down the actual cut in the card and you can see already it's easier to see and it definitely makes it easier to thread the little um, needle through something I forgot to do as I was um, cutting my little um, gaps ready to thread my ribbon was to make out, make sure that I'd paired them up so it's worth making sure that you haven't got an extra cut in your card which I've done here and you'll see when I begin threading this that I'll end up with a split that I didn't really need um, and shouldn't have cut in the card so I'm starting out by threading the tip of the double sided tape through and I'm just pulling it so that I've got enough ribbon left to tuck through my stitches to secure the end of the ribbon and obviously this one's going to lie much flatter than the crinkly ribbon that I used on the card itself uh, I just thought it was easier for you to be able to see uh, the technique um, of doing this without the ribbon tool so I'm literally just threading from top to bottom and keeping my ribbon uh, nice and flat creating those stitches I think the trick with this is, as you'll see here as I struggle to straighten my ribbon, is just to be careful to keep your ribbon nice and flat and um, not to let the ribbon twist as you're doing the stitching. So if you've got a ribbon punch you can use that, if you've got the same kind of ribbon tool that I used you could use that or you can do it by measuring it out and cutting the little grooves that you're going to thread your ribbon through by hand and it really does make a nice addition to a card or you could um, use it on a scrapbook page for instance you could make a frame for a scrapbook page or a border strip for a scrapbook page and uh, it's quite a nice fun thing to do and it looks nice when it's finished so there you have it I hope you uh, find this tutorial useful and that you give this card a go I think I've given you lots of ideas um, for how to make it in the colours and and supplies that you've got available in your collection uh, if not I hope that you found the ribbon tutorial uh, useful and that you'll be able to use this kind of uh, stitched ribbon strip as an embellishment on the cards you're making or perhaps on the scrapbook pages you're making so if you've liked my video don't forget to hit subscribe um, and thank you thank you for everyone that did hit subscribe I definitely reached that thousand subscribers on my birthday so that was a nice treat and uh, I thank you for watching and I look forward to crafting with you again soon